Okay, shalom, shalom. Kom yashala. Koholo Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Rachach Hadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone. They were well by the Spirit, taught us this beautiful truth. I just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa. That's out here sincerely keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. Zachnan, Nawach is coming at you with another quick, quick lesson. Pray that it's edifying by the Spirit. And just want to touch on the Passover. Which I'm sure you know, if you're in this truth, um, you've probably seen a lot of brothers doing videos on it, a lot of touch up. Um, you know, you can actually read through Exodus chapter 12, which we'll go off into. And um, I pulled a few more scriptures, uh, you know, where I was reading in the book of Psalms. You know, just some of the scriptures that stood out in precepts, you know, it kind of gave me the sense of something that we can think on or pray on as far as the Passover as well. Well, let's go to Exodus Chapter 12, and you know, we're, we're um, just practicing, uh, you know, uh, see, we're not in our kingdom, so we're not going to be able to, you know, do this 100%, you know what I'm saying? But we can practice the, the righteous acts right now, you know, on the planet. We're, you know, we're in practice mode. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he knows what's up. He knows our hearts. He knows our intentions. He knows that we're not in, a, in our land. He knows that, you know, a lot of the rules and regulations to the Passover that we just simply can't keep 100% but we're gonna try to the best of our ability to do the best that we can okay so now this is Exodus 12 it is entitled the first Passover they have it uh actually numbers chapter 9 verse 1 through 14 they have it Deuteronomy chapter 16 1 through 8 and Ezekiel 45 21 and 25 okay well let's start from the top here Exodus chapter 1 I mean, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye. Matter of fact, so um, this Passover was the, the, the first created month for us. Basically, you know, when we um, just before we came out of the land of Egypt and going into the promised land. So once we went into the promised land, that particular Passover, that was the very first day of the, you know, year basically to us or the, you know, our very first month. And, um, you know, here in the Americas, you know, they teach you that January 1st is a new year and all this other stuff. But as you can see, like Passover, it, it, it's around, it's still cool outside, but it's not brick, man. It's not all totally brick cold, you know. Now, it depends on where you are. I know like here where I'm at in this particular region, you know, it's going to be around... 50s to 60s you know so passover normally comes in around springtime things are, you know will start to bud soon you know and that that's what brings in newness man you know not when everything is dead in the dead of winter man so that that's a strike against these so-called white people man that's calling the new year january 1st you know the new year okay uh, verse 3 it says speak ye unto all the congregation of israel Saying, in the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. See? And if the household be too little for, for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto him, unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the, for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. So see, you know, like if you can come across some goat, that would be um, lawful as well. But the thing of it is, is like I said, a lot of this stuff we're not going to be able to keep 100 because first off, we need a lamb without blemish. And we don't have access to that. You know, you may go to the supermarket and grab a couple lamb chops or whatever you do, lamb shoulder, whatever, you know, just to practice this this particular righteous act of the holiday but we don't know if it's a male lamb or a male goat for that matter you know we have no idea <laughs> so and definitely we don't know if the, the, the that particular lamb had a blemish or not so you know we pray to you how about you shot for mercy you know what i'm saying and uh, we you know hey, we do the best that we can verse six it says and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So, see, we're not killing no, no lambs, man. 
You know, we're just going to get what pieces we can. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Verse 7, it says, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So, you know, of course, we don't have the actual blood blood. You know what I'm saying? Now, what I did last year, you know, just basically from um, because I kind of broiled it, you know, and, you know, where the, the, the actual fire basically, you know, could just basically hit it off. And, um, you know, I did smear some of the drainage so to speak some of the blood or you know fat from that particular you know um i've done lamb chops of course and you know i just you know i smeared some on the on the um post you know so that was something that i done you know you don't have to do it but it, it was a representation of the blood okay verse eight it says and they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it okay so you know that's why, you know, I basically broiled it because it's basically that flame is hitting it, you know. Um, so basically that was my way of roasting it. And the unleavened bread, we, you know, normally do um, like, you know, um, basically all corn tortilla chips or something like that. You know, you just don't want no leaven because you want to get all the leaven out of the house. You don't want no leaven bread. It says, and bitter herbs, they shall eat. They shall eat it. So, you know, normally we get horseradish. So get you know you can get some horseradish, and let's let's move on. It says, "Eat not of it raw." So of course we're not going to eat no raw meat, nor sodden at all with water. So we're not supposed to boil it, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertness thereof. So again, there there you go. You know we don't have a whole lamb to be doing this with. So we're we're just um, doing the righteous acts. You know we're practicing the righteous acts, man. So verse ten, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth until the morning ye shall burn with fire i did do that one year because i had leftovers and um i went directly out that following morning you know i kind of put it into a barbecue pit you know type of dilly you know and i um you know sprayed it down with some um lighter fluid and i just lit it on fire and just burnt what i had left you know so it's something you can do if you got a backyard but you know what i'm saying you know like i said again we're practicing the righteous acts verse 11 and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So, you know, I did do that as well. You know, we put on our garments, you know, and um, tie the garment up, you know, around the waist, the loins, you know, with shoes on, with staff in hand. You see what I'm saying? Let me get that again. It says, and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. And I, I don't, you know, I ate it <laughs> under a minute, basically, for what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I just went ahead and just smashed it, you know. And um, normally, you know what I'm saying? We had, uh, the, uh, I noticed the apostles, some of the elders, they talk about um, boiling eggs, which is good as well. I've done that, you know, and I plan on doing it this year. Yahweh Ratazah, you know, boiling up some eggs, you know, that way. You know, because eggs, you know, when you boil them, you can just, you know, kind of put them in a bowl or something like that. And they can just be like for somewhat of snacks in a sense. You know what I'm saying? You know, as we're going through the, the Passover and it's also, um, you know, a, a Shabbat as well, Sabbath. You know, so it's something on the side, something that you can, um, you know, have or just on the side, so to speak, um, which I think is a great idea. I, I normally do that on the um, Shabbat or so, uh, Sabbath days or whatever. Um, verse 12, it says. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, you can get uh, it's some kosher wines out here. I know Mogan David, they have a, a Passover kosher wine. Um, it's a few wines that you can get. So, you know, just, you know, get you a nice little little bottle of uh, red wine. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just top off the uh, the Passover, man. You're eating it in haste. And it's really simple, actually. And, and you know, you want to be wholehearted about this. You don't want to, um, you know, go off into this, you know, um, just thinking like it's a lamb dinner. The, the apostles, you know, they've been bringing that out like this is not a party, man. It's not a this is a solemn assembly. You have to think about how you, what Yahweh Shai went through when, he, you know, that last Passover just before, you know, he was killed on our behalf, man. You know what I'm saying? He hey, he he, he sweat, you know, basically like <laughs> he was praying, man, and sweating blood droplets, so to speak, you know, like thick, thick sweat, man. Asking Yahweh about Shimei Shai, asking Yahweh. 
you know, to um, deliver him all that cup, man. But he had to do what he had to do for us. So, you know, we had to keep that in mind, man. You know? This is not no party thing, man. This is not no, you know, you showing up like this a damn all-white party or something, man. You know? It's telling you how to do it. <laughs> you're girding up your loins. You're going to have your shoes on. You know, because it was a time of haste. You was on, We was on, on the run, man. That's why you eat unleavened bread, because the bread didn't have time to, um, you know, lump up. And also, you want to get rid of the leaven, which, it, which is in your life, you know? You want to get rid of, you know, because um, the, the scripture said a, a little leaven. Matter of fact, let me, um, let me see if I can get that real quick. Leaven is the whole lump. Because he said, don't, don't be like the Pharisees, man. Okay, so now, let me go here real quick. Yeah, let me just start at verse 6. Your glory, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Yahweh Shai, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So he's our Passover. That's what this is, man. This is a representation of, of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. He, he, he's the, 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 that lasting Passover for us, man. So, you know, we want to try and, you know, examine ourselves, get ourselves together, do what we can to, to grow. We're supposed to be growing in this truth, man. We're supposed to be doing better and better and better by the day, man. So, you know, we got to work on things, man. Let's go back. Exodus 12, verse 12. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. So you have to realize what's re what was really going on at that particular time, man. The Lord killed off the firstborn and every day. Matter of fact, the scripture says that it was not one household that somebody didn't get, get, didn't get killed. So you got to realize how much screaming was going on. Can you imagine? You can just be even in today's time, you can be in your house. And, and if everybody next door to you and everybody across the street and everybody down the street is screaming, you're going to be able to hear. You're going to be shook. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it, it, it's such a serious time, man. It's not no, no, no time to be playing no games, man. You see? No matter of fact, let me get this again. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land. So that's what the Passover is about. He, the Lord <laughs> passing you over, man. Because it doesn't say it that Israelites were um, actually killed. But man, they, I'm, they, knowing Jake, it was some Israelites killed because they probably didn't listen. You know, Jake is hard-headed and stiff-necked. It's probably some damn Jake that caught the business too. <laughs> but anyway, this is what it's about, man. You, this, the Passover was for the Israelites. It's not for every nation. Because if it was for every nation, why would he kill the Egyptians? Why didn't the Lord include Pharaoh and his people in the Passover? Since the scriptures and salvation is for everybody. You see, the old covenant was for the Israelites. The new covenant is for the Israelites. This truth is not for everybody, man. The so-called white man sold you that lie when he sold you Easter bunnies and shit. Damn bunnies laying chicken eggs, man. You got your little kids and your little and they little cute little little little, little dresses and, and, and little suits and shit running around with a damn basket in their hand searching for eggs that have nothing to do with the scriptures, man. That's idolatry. And and, and man, <laughs> at this point in the game, you niggas shouldn't even, be, even want to be bothered with nothing like that right now, man. Hey, for real. Let these so-called white people do their Easter, man. Stay away from that Easter, man. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, because you are the Hebrew Israelites. This Passover is for you, you see? So now, I'm going to come back to this. 
Because I want to grab a couple of these scriptures that I seen in um, Psalms, you know, that just kind of reminded me of this Passover. Because we're being protected, man. This is Psalms 32 and 7. It says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. You see? So, that's Jehovah Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. He's a hiding place to us, man. And, and, and being in that in, 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 in our abode at the time, with the, with the blood on the post of the door, for him to see and pass us over, hey, that was a, 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 a setting of protection, man. You see? Matter of fact, let's go to 34. Psalms 34 and verse 8. And he reads, O oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man that trusts them in him. So we're trusting in Yahweh by Shimei was shy for our protection, that he will pass us over, man. That you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like for real. And we don't know what's gonna go down for this Passover, man. We don't know, man, but we take it serious. This it, this is not a playing game here, man. This is not time to be playing around. Matter of fact, let me go back to 31. Psalms 31 and 20. Keep your heart by Shem Yahweh Shai in mind of, of being your protector, man. Psalms 31 and 20, and it reads, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. You see? So we're, 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 you want to constantly be in, in, in the, the stronghold of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Constantly, man. Let's go to verse 27. Chapter 27, real quick. Nah. Psalms 27 and 5. And it reads, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And that, hey, that protection, we need that protection, man. We need that protection. Because you better believe had the Israelites not listened to the Lord, they didn't do what he told them to do. Then you, hey, there was a, <laughs> they asked was catching it too. And this this place right here, especially the Americas, this is spiritual Egypt, man, all over again. You see? Let's go to um, let me get one more. Psalms 9 and 9. And I'll finish out uh Exodus or the Passover part of it. Psalms 99, Yahweh also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. See, we're, we were super duper oppressed. We're super duper oppressed in this, um, <laughs> in these Americas, man. And throughout the, throughout the world, wherever there are so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, man, Israelites, whether we're in China, Japan, Haiti, it don't make no difference where we're scattered to. We're oppressed. By these other nations, man. And the Lord is about to do a real number on, on these on these nations, man. And especially you so-called white people. Y'all gonna get it the worst, man. You damn Edomites. For real. Well, let's go back to Exodus 12. I was at like verse 13. Verse 13, and it says, And the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Then when I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So that's why we're doing it, man. Tomorrow, sundown, the, um, March 16th, sundown to March 23rd, sundown, Wednesday to Wednesday, seven days, unleavened bread. Get all the leaven out of your house, man. You know, if you got a car to put it into or if you got a garage or a shed or something like that to put into. You know, I know some um, people don't have access to stuff like that. You know, um, you got a closet you can put it into and just put it away, you know, because it's not supposed to be in our habitations. But, you know, like Yahweh knows all of our situations, man. But for damn sure, you shouldn't be eating no leaven, man. So watch yourself. Don't eat no, no bread, no cookies, no cakes, no nothing with no leaven in it, man. Get rid of all that stuff out of the house if you can. You see what I'm saying? Because what I done was I went to Walmart. And you know, you can get those Rubbermaid tubs with the, with the tops on them, you know, and cap them down. 
You know, I just got a nice size one of those. I got a patio out back, you know, and um, matter of fact, I got another car sitting in the driveway. I could just slide it off in there, you know, but I was just going to put everything off into that, that rubber, that rubber made tub or whatever. You know, it depends on what size you need. You know, they can go for anywhere from between like 10 to $15 or something like that. But like I said, again, if you can't do anything like that, put it away in the closet, man, and push the door up, man. You see? Okay. Um, it says seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. And the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. And whosoever eat eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So see, amen. And we take that serious, man. And we know that we're practicing the righteous acts, but these are things that we can control, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, by the will of Yahweh, by Shimei, I was shy, man. So let's, let's focus on that and be careful with it, you know. Verse 16. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in, the, in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. So basically the preparation of your food. You know, now the apostles, you know, the brothers, they all, you know, elders bring out that, hey, you may have to work, man. Because we're in the land of our captivity. You know, and like I said, again, we're practicing those righteous acts. But, you know, if you got to work, you just got to work, man. But, you know, just pray to you. How about you? I was shot for mercy and do the best that you can, man. That's what, that's what, we're, that's what we're doing, man. You see? Verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whoever, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off. From the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, and all your habitation shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to the, your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hassop and dip, dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike it and strike the lentil and its two side posts. With the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of this house until the morning. So when you when when that, when, when the Passover starts, it's like you. When when the Passover starts, stay in the house, man. Stay in the house. Don't be all outside. None of it. Just stay in the house until the morning. Stay in the house. Because that's the way that it went down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just stay in the crib, man. I, hey, that's the that's not hard to do. Just stay on in the house, man. You see? It says, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in, to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and thy sons forever. Let me see if that's... Um, couple more verses on it let me just get it all uh, verse 25 and it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which Yahweh will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you what mean ye by this service that ye shall say it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And that's that's it, man. So, you know, <laughs> get rid of all the leaven out of the house. You know, you're going to roast your um, you don't boil your um, your lamb or your goat, whatever you're going to do. You roast it, you know, or broil it. You know what I'm saying? Um. Like I said, again, get rid of all the leaven out of the house. Don't eat no leaven for seven days. Um, you know, you, you, hey, you, you gird up your loins. You have your shoes on. You know, your staff in hand. You know, speaking as far as men, have your staff in hand. You know what I'm saying? You got your, uh, 
you know, like I said again, you can get you uh, uh, some um, kosher wine. You know, like I said, um, the, the apostles talks about boiled eggs. You can have those on the side, so to speak. And, you know, just um, some, you know, like some tortilla chips or something like that, you know. But it's got to be unleavened. The bread can't be bread with yeast in it, man. You see what I'm saying? Um, also, like, I guess if you drink beer, some beer, certain beers have yeast in it, you know. So, you know, you want to rid yourself of stuff like that. But, you know, just, hey, search through the cabinets, pull everything out. And just, um, you know, like I said, if you can get one of those tub rubber maids, if you got any, you know, you can use something like that and just, you know, sit, sit, um, sit your stuff outside, um, you know, in a, old, you know, in a car or, you know, in a, your garage or if you got a shed or anything like that. Um, so, you know, hey, just read back through Exodus 12. It's really only like a few few verses, about 20, you know, 28 verses in. You can read back into it, refresh yourself. And, um, you know, just wanted to just bring that out, man. Um, Happy Pusat. You know, we pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that this is our last one. But hey, you know, hey, time, as time goes on, we we want to continue being in this frame of mind. Because one of the brothers did bring that out. Um, the Apostle Gabar, he brought that up as well. You know, like, not just, you know, this is the Passover. As soon as you make it through this week of the Passover, you back to doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? You want to keep in mind that that Passover mentality throughout the year, man. Until we're out of here, man. So with that. Pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashallah.